Wow, what a glorious day in Tasmania. We're just outside the little town of Longford at one of Australia's most important pioneer properties, Woolmers, a place where colonial history meets 21st century gardening. The estate's spectacular rose collection was planted in 2001 and is one of the finest you'll see in the country. Now, this rose garden is just enormous. There are over 3,000 different rose bushes, hundreds of different varieties, and they've also got some of the old ancient species roses as well, great big bushes. Now, the garden design is based on the old French 1600s triangular design in a large rectangular garden bed. Then they mass plant them with the same variety, so you get a real sense of the colour. There are also beds of individual rose breeders from right around the world. This one happens to be the Delbard roses. They're from France. This one at the front here is Grimaldi. What an amazing colour. In fact, it's one of the largest planted roses, by the way, at Flemington in Melbourne at the race course. So it's a really tough, hardy, beautiful rose. Then you've got Leonardo da Vinci. Isn't it incredible? This is a, a more single colour, a beautiful pink, strong, vibrant rose, and the bush is also quite vigorous. Andre Matisse. And look at the flowers. Aren't they intense? A beautiful sort of deep red with splashes and streaks of white. The thing about all of these is that they're disease resistant, easy to look after, and the perfume is a knockout. There are lots of reasons why I love this rose garden, but one of them is that they show you all the different ways to grow roses. Now, if you want a hedge, this is an absolute cracker. This one is called Pamela Hutchins, who was the first rosarian to work here at Woolmers. But if you want to go for yellow, then Gelba Engel. Look at that, isn't it an amazing, vibrant golden yellow? And it's quite a big plant as well. But if you'd like a, a small hedge rose, then what about George Best? Yeah, the famous Northern Ireland professional footballer. Now, when it comes to growing roses on an arbour, you've got to be really careful with your selection. Here, they've chosen Westerland. What a beautiful rose. Now, it's not a, a super vigorous rose. Some climbers will go right over the top, but this one is what we call a medium grower. So it gets up to maybe two metres tall, and it's a beautiful plant, actually developed by cords in Germany. If you want something of this colour, Westerland is the name of it. Now, Jane, you're in charge of all these volunteers. Huge job. How many <laughs> volunteers have you got? On a good day, we hope to have about 10 in the, in the rose garden. And during winter, of course, we try to get a few more who mm. come and help with the pruning. Pruning, pruning yes. duty. <laughs> so you have, what, 3,000 roses? Yes, and about 350 varieties. Well, and... I've got to say, they are looking so lush and mm. healthy. Yes, yes, we're thrilled with the way they're looking this year. They've just been fabulous. What about disease and insects? Do you get many? Uh, no, it's not really a problem, and I, th I think that's possibly because we're in this rather elevated site. Breezes are always going through, as right. you can feel at the moment. Y yeah, it's beautiful. Now, this is one of the country's great rose gardens. It's a heritage site. So what's it like working here? Oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. As you can imagine, surrounded by all these beautiful roses. And also, we're very aware that this magnificent rose garden complements the old house so beautifully. And so, any visit to Woolmer's Gardens is not complete without a peek inside this colonial masterpiece. Hello, Judy. Hello, Graham. <laughs> Good How to see you? you again. I'm well, thank you. Good. What a wonderful collection. Now, you're one of the volunteers who looks after this. Yes, I am. It's six generations of the one family, layer upon layer of, of all of their furniture, furnishings, everything is here. Now, of course, it's the Archer family. Yes, this is Thomas Archer I, 
and a parliamentarian. You know, he was doing so much for the colony at the time. Yes. It's down to Thomas that Woolmers is such a remarkable property in that everything is still intact. It's one of the most complete convict era properties in Australia. And we now have UNESCO. Yes, status. Yes. Which is incredible. At the height of the mid 1820s, between Brickenden and Woolmers, there were 90 convicts really? um, on the estate. Well, they were shearing 10,000 sheep here oh, in really? 1826. Good gracious. Um, by 1836, it had gone up to 25,000 sheep, and it was all blade shearing. But even with the hard yakka, Thomas is said to have treated his convicts well. Right. A lot of the convicts actually yeah. stayed here right. after their term had ended. A ticket of leave, right. Yeah. Would you like to have lived back in that era, or...? Um, I think if you had a certain status, it would be fine. Right. OK, if so... If you didn't, no, I don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough.